More than just being one of the top pros in Apex, NRG Sweet Dreams is also arguably in the top three for being an in-game leader. He's led his team to numerous tournament winnings and even multiple first and second place landings in the ALGS. He tends to have a calm, cool, and coordinated approach to Apex, which leads to thousands of people who enjoy watching him. But more importantly, it also leads to a very interesting case study to carefully look at what he knows that the rest of the Apex player base just doesn't quite understand. I spent countless hours Hours, handpicking some of the most notable recent clips from Sweet so that we can analyze his gameplay and learn some of his secrets to his success. This is an Apex Legends masterclass. Let's take a look into this first clip. Now this is an end game from Realm's new solo queue $150,000 tournament where top players are randomly placed onto different teams every match to compete for the prize pool. Now Sweet has a commanding presence in all of these clips but you'll really see it come to light in end game scenarios where there's a lot of different things to focus focus on and situations quickly become very hectic. He takes his positioning into account here when looking to eliminate easy kills from teams who are still trying to get into zone but stuck on the edge. He's careful to position himself and his teammates so that the other teams who are above them cannot shoot down on them while they go about clearing out the edge of zone. As he pushes forward here, he clearly finds himself overextending and almost gets knocked because he doesn't have his Q available. Using some nice movement to avoid damage, he barely gets his Q off and returns to safety after securing these kills. Now facing a top 3 situation and being on low ground, he tries to decide which team deserves his attention, but this is where things get really interesting. First, Sweet realizes that the second team on their left actually doesn't have a great spot and he believes that they can wipe them, so he directs his teammates to focus on them. But then, he quickly calculates where the third team is and he scratches that plan completely. Why? Well, he knows if he kills the team on the left, his team has a much harder time getting to where the zone will end. They have to go uphill and presumably play a weaker position than the third team which actually has the best spot in zone. So he wants to use the second team as a distraction. It's a bold move because things don't always go to plan here. When you bank on other teams doing what you think they should or could do, well, things can go wrong pretty quickly. He acknowledges this though and tells his teammates if the second team doesn't push the third team, then they'll kill the team on the left to secure second place, but emphasizes that that is plan B. So he starts focusing on the team on height, aka team three, so that team two can start to work with them inadvertently and do the same thing. He then places a portal to the edge of this tiny rock on height because he wants to take space and position his team so that his plan will work. And this is where Sweet becomes a master of space. He knows the spacing perfectly and he also delivers the communication of his plan to his teammates very clearly. As Sweet gets a kill on the team on height, he directs a full-on push to take that height from that team to fully enact the pinch he's looking for. As it plays out more, both of the teams become forced to fight one another simultaneously while Sweet's team takes the best position in zone. Now this wasn't just some easy third party where they have to shoot the last player in the back for the win. These two teams were still going at it, but also still shooting at Sweet's team. So the pacing of this fight is also extremely important too. But with the correct game plan, excellent pacing, and a masterclass in taking space, Sweet's team comes out with the dub here. Now in the second clip, there's another end game where similar concepts are put to work here. There's also some huge differences. First, the geography of this end zone is much trickier to navigate with four full squads left, and Sweet is also playing Rampart, which he was fairly new to in this clip. You can see him pull out Sheila to spray the remaining bullets in it because he didn't know that the ult doesn't recharge until you stow, place, or shoot every bullet left in it. One of the team's Gibby ults comes raining down in front of them, forcing the team on their right to come into their field of view. Getting some solid damage on that team, one of the other teams then begins to shoot Sweet's team in the back. Sweet yells for a bubble which winds up saving their life, but with things moving fast, his team acknowledges that taking the height here is going to be key. Now watch how Sweet carefully plays behind the respawn beacon to block line a sight from the north team while placing a wall up and focusing on the team that's east. They once again have created a perfect pinch and are forcing the other two teams into one another to fight. It's also crucial to point out that Hal was doing a great job anchoring and also watching 
matching the team north. This is going to make it virtually impossible for either team to do anything to Sweet's team because it just becomes way too oppressive in the limited amount of space that they all have. Once the third team quickly dies, his team acknowledges it's the last team and begins to move closer to try and secure the kills. How goes down, but it's not in vain and they get another dub. Now I want to stress, people can look at this footage and think that this is very easy, but it's really a masterclass in understanding how to deal with multiple threats at once. Their positioning was always at the forefront of his mind and it allowed for things to play out how they did. Okay, this third clip is definitely something you're going to want to see. It's a very unique clip and honestly even surprised me a bit. This is once again a clip from Realm's tournament where Sweet's team is going to do the armory right outside of checkpoint. But as they're getting closer to it, another team in a car has the same idea. One of his teammates calls it out and starts getting some huge damage on them. And then Sweet follows it up by getting a knock right when they're trying to park the car. He emphasizes to not let the down player crawl into the armory so that they can get the thirst and make it into a 2v3 when the other two eventually have to come out. Now they have to patiently wait for the duo to complete the armory, but he's confident they will kill them and get their loot too. He mentions chasing them down with the car once they fly out and land somewhere, but it goes down in a much more interesting way. As soon as he hears the armory stop and the players begin opening the pills, he knows it's a 60 second timer from when the armory will be opened if the duo doesn't activate it sooner. He then tells his teammates exactly what's going to happen. I'll let you listen to it here. All right, the opening post, so about a minute from now is when this will open. We're going to try to do a lot of entry damage if they try to hit the cannon instantly, okay? And then we're going <laughs> to shoot them out of the air, get them low, and then we're going to triple jump right here into the car, and we're going to chase them, okay? The enemy team's seer uses their ult, which then prompts their own seer to use theirs, but as soon as the door opens, he starts firing at them even when they're launching in the air, and then he quickly hops in the car, directing his teammates to follow and to watch where the enemies land. He doesn't want to lose sight of them because he wants to follow up on these kills. And just as planned, the players don't have enough time to heal from when they landed to when his team follows up. However, one of the enemies did wind up getting away, but they are still able to kill this Rampart. Now getting 2kp in total off this team plus their loot really goes a long way in a game mode like this tournament, but he really used some high IQ moves to secure these kills. However, he does acknowledge that this is a bit of a troll play in general, meaning he may not do this in something where the stakes are a bit higher. Now, for all the people who always love to comment on these types of videos and say, well, yeah, dude, you left out the most obvious part about these clips. They all have competent teammates. Well, I want those people to know, and this may come as a surprise to them, but Apex is a team game. Now, I do understand a lot of the community solo queues, but it's on you to find some teammates if you really want to experience Apex at its peak. Now, anyways, I picked a clip out where Sweet is entirely alone in a ranked match, and he needs to get to work. He starts out in a top four scenario with some great positioning. He knows one team is on height on top of Thermal, one team is below them, and he senses that there's probably a rat remaining as the fourth squad. He can put this together because he paid attention to the squads left remaining. Once his teammates died, it started to show a question mark next to it. Now, if it's below 10 players, it always shows a question mark. So he uses his game sense to depict where a possible rat could be, and then he strikes when he finds them. Notice how he positions himself just so, so that the enemy team on height cannot open him up to crossfire. From here, it goes on for a few minutes as both teams try to weigh him down with gunfire, but because Sweet's positioning is on the edge with a ton of cover, he can ultimately wait this out and just be patient. As time winds down, he looks for an opportunity to focus on one of the players on low ground, and while he does this, the zone forces the team on height to drop, and the timing was perfect because now Sweet got the fight going. While maintaining a position on the outskirts, he downs this Pathfinder that drops right in front of him. Now that team quickly gets wiped, and he has to send forward to see if he can clean it up and win the game. He finds an even better position from there, and he notices one player is downed. He tries to land some shots on this Maggie, but his subtle pause here behind the cover makes the Maggie think he's not peeking, so she tries to cross and close the gap to him. He then peeks up and puts her down perfectly. Now, it's an ideal situation, a straight up 1v1 versus the last player. He maintains his high ground, but the enemy Wraith uses this ring console as cover, and it turns out that this thing has a wider hitbox than it looks like. Things get very, very close, and with only one shot remaining in his PK, he 
has to decide. Does he reload or does he try to heal? As he starts to pop a bat, he hears the Wraith try to climb up and he lands the most clutch shot of the game to kill her and win it. Now this is an excellent example of patience and micro positioning. And if you found this breakdown helpful, I covered five secrets that all pros love to use in this video right here. Check it out next. Thanks for watching. Peace.